Welcome back everybody. We're in Unreal Engine 5 again and today I actually have a tutorial for you. I'm not going to go into the nitty-gritty of how to work with Unreal and stuff like that but I am going to show you how to get your ZBrush models into UE5 using just your polypaint information or vertex color information and use that as a texture so no UVs involved and we're utilizing nanite which means we can have a, a very large uh, polygon model and as you can see right here we've got quite a bit I've got a couple uh, objects here uh, I've got this alien probe here he is he has no UVs at all he is all um, polypaint and it took it took a lot of tinkering with the materials to finally get this to work uh, it wasn't as straightforward as I thought it would be, but I finally made up a material which I'll share with you and show you the, kind of the nuts and bolts of it. But it works. It finally works. So pretty jazzed about that. And then uh, the model you can download, uh, you can download this model I'll have on Gumroad and QBrush. And you can uh, download this. Uh, some of you might be familiar. We did a photo scan tutorial a couple years ago and this was the result of it so jump back to that tutorial and it's got all the images and everything that you can use to make a photo scan and you can come up with this and it's using the same thing there's it's just poly paint information or color vertex information so let's go over to zbrush and let's see how we get this started so we have the model here of the rock and i had to decimate it down to uh, keep it under 25 megabytes so sorry it's not as high poly as you would hope it would be but this is all poly paint information and it still looks really good even at uh, I think I have it at 400,000 polygons Let's pull this up here as you can see so I mean it's still a pretty hefty model and it held on to all the information so whenever you decimate something make sure you decimate use and keep poly paint and then you should be good to go so oh, one other note whenever you're exporting out always go through scale master first and resize these guys because uh, zbrush has got a funny habit of exporting out at like two millimeters tall so it's going to be a very itty bitty model for unreal so that's just the scale that they work with and scale master will help you out there so i'm not really going to go into scale master today there's plenty of tutorials out there about it so just make sure you scale it up to a size that you would like it to be you know this one i made 100 centimeters tall i i think i goofed it up so it may be uh like larger than that when you bring it into unreal so let's head back to unreal well before we do that uh export it as a fbx because i found that fbx seems to work a little better than just obj and unreal changes it to an fbx anyway so you might as well just change it and uh, here's the settings i have uh we do all visible so if you have multiple sub tools it'll capture all of it uh export it in binary uh embed maps i'm not sure if that really uh transfers or not but I kept it on anyways and you can also do uh, poly groups as mats or you can do uh, um, import mat oh, no we don't want to import we want to export let's see yeah just keep it to the settings right now and I think you'll be okay and I don't turn smooth normals on because why would you want to smooth it because you want it to look exactly the way it leaves here so with that said let's go over to unreal pull it up here and I am just gonna hide this guy and we're gonna bring in another rock I'm gonna show you how to do that if you do control and spacebar gotta make sure you're on the scene control and spacebar that'll pull up your uh, content browser and we need to go find this rock. Uh, I got a name, GMP Rock Vertex Color FBX. So that's the one you'll be looking for. It'll probably just be Rock Vertex Color. And then all we have to do is drag and drop. 
and then now we come into here and typically this vertex color import is grayed out so why it's doing that now is probably because I've already uh, changed some of the settings or I've already imported previously to uh, change the vertex color or to import the vertex color but typically it'll say ignore and it'll be grayed out so we're just going to do ignore for the time being so this way you can see the process of making it work so we're just going to import it give it a second or two all right here we go we got everything uh pulled in you'll always get this uh info up top saying that there was no smoothing groups because we didn't smooth the normals it just likes to let you know so your models look nice and pretty but with nanite we don't have to worry about it so we'll just clear that off and close it and control spacebar again and we should have this new rock here and that little icon there on the lower left means it hasn't been saved to the project yet so you can always just hit save and that icon should well it should go away but it didn't maybe I'm mistaken on that and as you can see it's huge but it brought it in and when you're importing in in Unreal on the import dialog make sure you click nanite so it builds uh, nanite you can always make sure it should be on here somewhere yeah nanite settings make sure that's enabled so because we didn't uh, we told it to ignore it you don't uh, typically when you start a project it always ignores the vertex colors so a way to fix that would be to slap on if you come down here you'll see vertex color import and because like I said most of the times it'll be grayed out and you can't change it so you come in here and hit replace and re-import mesh and I think it was because I had already done this process with one of the other models so it gave me the option up front to do that so it's the only thing I could think I could think of maybe it's just a little bug in the system they're not used to people bringing in vertex color information because they use a uh, vertex painting for so many other parts of Unreal Engine so now we just gotta wait for it to re-import it in usually it, it takes less time to re-import it we don't see any visible difference right now so what we can do is go ahead and save maybe oh hold on okay now it's good it wasn't quite done uh, importing everything just yet so depending on the density of your mesh yeah that's it, it'll take a little longer from time to time so we've saved that and it's still building the mesh fields or distance fields and all that but we're okay here should be able to close that down pull up our content browser and now let me grab this GMP rock drag it in here and we'll move it around just a little bit bring it up maybe scale them down just a little oops down that's fine Nope, not fine. I gotta scale him more. He's out of my light source. Okay. Alright. Bring him. There we go. Now we can see him better. Okay, let me pull this back, our content browser back up. And you'll find I'll have this with the rock uh, as well as its own. Um, download on Gumroad and CubeRush that you can uh, download this and uh, it's a material I built it's not the greatest in the world but hey it works so let me double click this so we can take a look at it so basically it will do your base color metallic and roughness now it's using all the color information from the vertex color to generate all this so you know it's it's not going to be perfect okay at least the metallic and roughness 
might be a little off, not quite what you're looking for. So let's go ahead. As you can see, the base color, I have uh, the ability to add a little tint to it, which I'll show you here in a minute. It's where you can add like a red hue to it or a green hue and add to it. Uh, the metallic, there's uh, just a value parameter in there that you can um, change uh, how much metallic you want. You can turn it off or you can turn it all the way on. Same thing with the roughness. There's a roughness amount that you can um, uh, turn up and down. And as well as I desaturated it so this way you get a better roughness uh, map at the end of it. So because with roughness you only want a black and white and you know a grays in there you don't want any color information so I desaturated it and it seemed to help quite a bit so let's go ahead and get out of here save it just in case and then, then we will apply it to uh, our new rock whenever it's done saving alright it's done saving now I close them out and open this up and GM, GMP color vertex should have did vertex color but oh well and just drag and drop and there you go he is using all the polypaint data that we sent over from ZBrush and let's uh, take a look around here right now the roughness is pretty high so you get a lot of glistening uh, rock there which is fine if you want a nice wet rock but let's go ahead and pull up the material and slide him over here and it's going to affect both of them because they both have the same material let me open up the parameters here and we can go over this here uh, We'll ignore the top two here, but we can adjust the metallic. I can bring him down to zero, and that will change the metallic color. And then the roughness amount, we can go up to say like a 0.6, and that'll get rid of all those little highlights on there and make it look a lot more like rock, you know. So let's go ahead and mess with the color tint here. And we'll go up to just a weird pink color, okay? And it's defaulted at zero, so you're not going to see anything right away. So let's bump it up to one. And as you can see, you can override your color on there, but you'll still have some of the darker tones. So you can, you can play with it there. Just a little added option there I thought I'd throw in there but we will just uh, zero that out and close him up and yes save it there we go but as you can see it's not super complicated you know if you've played with uh, unreal for a little bit and a lot of us have and uh, obviously the material part was uh, my Achilles heel and obviously if you guys can do better just uh, have at it you know so I mean if you have any suggestions on how to make the material better please let me know and I will update it but for now here's something that you can start with and a quick way to just throw it in into your um, let's see just a quick way to put it into your um, project so save the project real quick and then find your content folder and have like a material folder, subfolder or whatever. And then just literally take this uh, uh, Unreal asset and then just drop it right into there. And it should, it should see it whenever you open up the content browser again. So it doesn't like you to drag it straight into the content browser for some reason. But I found that if you just do it via the the explorer it works just fine so but that is about it for today guys um if you got any questions there i'm 
I'm not an expert on Unreal Engine just yet, but had something here that I thought you guys might like, so thought I'd share it with you here. And this is pretty cool stuff, guys. So uh, definitely uh, let me know what you're making with it. I'm always curious to see what anybody else is doing, and if you got any tips and tricks, hey, share it with me. I, I, I like tips and tricks. So, but like I said, that's it for now, guys. And have fun uh, bringing your ZBrush models into UE5, and we're going to catch you in the next video. You guys have a great day.